Hey everyone, Kelly here. And I was thinking I am ready to film this morning. You know, I'm feeling good about it and everything. And so I started compiling my books to do like an early February wrap up because there's still a couple more days in the month. And then I remembered I have not done my wrap up from December or January. So that's what we're doing today. I only had four books in December and I had more in January, but because it's been a little bit since I read some of these, it might go kind of quickly. Um, sorry if you can hear my cat in the background. He's like chewing on everything. I don't know, <laughs> like on the lamp, whatever. So if you hear a little bit of noise, it's probably him being a little bit of a punk. Um, yeah, anyways, so I'll talk about the four books I read in December and then the pile of books I read in January and hopefully we won't be here too long. All right, so first, December. Like I said, I only read four things in December and I liked everything. It's four and five stars. So first I read Patina by Jason Reynolds and this is book two. Is it book two or is it book three? It's book two. Book two in the track series, the first one's called Ghost. And these are just really good quality contemporary middle grade books. I'm not usually a big fan of contemporary middle grade. It's not like my go-to genre for middle grade. I prefer fantasy, sci-fi and middle grade. Um, but these are just really excellently done. Um, it's following different members from this track team. And this one is following, I think it's the only girl in the series, um, Patina or Patty as she goes by. And I just love all the different dynamics that go into this. Patty, um, you know, she loves the track team, but things are kind of changing this year because she's moving into doing, um, what's it called when relays. So that's a totally different thing than just being an individual runner. So she's learning how to work as more of a team and how to pass the baton and all that. And then she's also doing a group project at school, which using the same kind of skills of like, how do you work with a group when you're the one that usually gets stuck with the majority of the work? And then like, she's also dealing with a lot of stuff at home. Um, she doesn't live with her mother. She lives with her aunt and um, she lives with her sister, her younger sister and kind of feels like she has to take on a parent role with her younger sister. And there's just a lot going on at home as well. And I just love how this series combines like all kinds of issues that young kids have and just like show really great role models in their life through this like track team. And yeah, I would say if you read like one contemporary middle grade series, this one is excellent. So I gave it four stars. Um, I don't know why I didn't give it five. I mean, mostly because contemporary is not my genre, but they're really good. I really enjoyed this one. And then moving on to Castle Hangnail by Ursula Vernon. If you don't know, Ursula Vernon is the real name for T. Kingfisher. That T. Kingfisher is her pen name. And she writes with her real name when she does middle grade and children's books. And then she writes as T. King Fisher when she does like adult books. And so this is one of her middle grade books. And this was just super cute. Um, it's just following this girl who um, answers a request for a castle who's looking for a wicked witch to run the castle. And she's not really a wicked witch, but she's like really just wants to get out of her house and thinks it'd be fun to run a castle. So she kind of lies about being a wicked witch and then kind of gets to know all the minions that are at the castle and it's just so sweet and adorable if you've read t kingfisher adult stuff it's still the same kind of sarcastic humor but without all the kind of like you know in her adult stuff she puts in a lot of kind of um spooky creepy or like a couple sometimes some gross stuff none of that is in this this is all just super cute sweet Definitely appropriate for kids, but still has that like dry, sarcastic humor. And this was just adorable. I loved all the little characters. I really loved our main character, Molly. Um, so this was just a sweet, fun, middle grade fantasy. Gave it four stars. And then I read um, a series book, a book four in a series. This is City of Wind by Jordan Rivett. This is the Steel and Fire series. These were independently published. If you get them now, they have different covers on them, but I've been really enjoying this series. Um, I had started the series many years ago, read books one through three, and then kind of, I'm always bad at like continuing series. So I gave it up, I like, or just stopped reading them. And then this last year, I decided I'm going to get back and read all five. And I read reread books one through three. This was a new read to me. And I still have yet to read book five, but I hope to do that very soon. And um, so I can't really tell you what this book specifically about is about, but this is like definitely more on the side of young adult fantasy. 
um, pretty fast paced, has like some political things going on. Um, but the part I really love about it is um, there's a lot of focus on dueling, like um, our main character, before she got <laughs> mixed up in all of the politics that are happening, she was um, a duelist, you know, you know, sort like fencing. And like, this was kind of her career path, like in this world, um, that's like their main entertainment. People go to watch these, um, you know, fencing duels. And um, so she was trying to get a patron, patron so that this could be her like professional career. And then she got sucked into teaching um, how to duel to the prince. And that's when she gets pulled into all the politics that are happening. There's also magic. There's like fire magic and air. And um, so that, I mean, that's elemental magic, right? So it's like water and fire and air and all that stuff of those type of magic. So we get that kind of element. And so by the time we get to this book, just really enjoying the characters, what's going on in the world, really ready to see how it's all going to wrap up. Um, so I gave this one four stars. And then we ended off December and ended off 2023 with a five star read. This is The Separate Jet Scandal by Courtney Milan, also the fourth book and final book in a series, which was really exciting to like finish up a series. There was a novella after this and I read it in January, so I am completely done with this series. And this was one of my favorite in this series. Um, this is called the Brother Sinister series because we're following a bunch of, um, like every time we're following a her hero um, is, um, th some of them are brothers, some of them are kind of like adopted brothers. They like have formed this kind of group where they're all really close. And so they call themselves the Brother Sinister, but they're not all related. And um, this one, I just loved this couple. So this one, the actual, the girl is part of like, the brother sinister group and so she had we've seen her before i think it's her older brother was one of the ones um who was you know a main character in another book and so she, now she's grown up and she is running this women's newspaper so she's um and she's a suffragette so she's like really fighting for women's rights and running this newspaper where she talks about women's rights and all that and then she meets this man who's kind of um acts a little bit like a rogue but basically he's had like a bit of a scarred past and some issues with his family and so he's um returning back to his the, his hometown um but with another name and you know a lot of baggage and I just really love the way Corny Milan writes dialogue it, it's very like quippy kind of dialogue so if you were like somebody that likes like Emily Henry kind of dialogue I think Courtney Milan would be a great historical for you she does have that really like witty banter type thing um but also once the people get together they're always just so tender and respectful of each other and that's the other thing i really like is how much respect her um characters have for each other and so it could be like a hate to love romance but they're not like disrespectful or mean to each other so that's something i love about it and this was five stars i just really loved these two main characters and their kind of like journey to especially heal him he's the one with a lot of like hard emotional past and you know being able to kind of heal that a little bit and then we get together so really good great final you know full book in that series so that's what I read in December had a really great reading month in January I was hosting a readathon with my friend Kara from Wild Book Garden we were doing the short stack readathon where we read short things and so I read a lot more in January so I'm gonna kind of go I'm just gonna go in like order star order so i'm gonna start with my three stars then four and five i did not have any one or two stars so so still felt like a good one and actually i only had three three th stars and most of the things were four stars so i felt like once again a good reading month i did like maybe quit a couple things so that helped but and the things i gave three stars i don't like regret reading they just weren't like stuff that's gonna stick with me so i had two things that i don't have the physical copy i read the like novella that's part of the series um, that's like the final entry in that series is a novella called Talk Sweetly to Me by Courtney Milan. And I just gave this one three stars. Out of all of the books and novellas in the series, this was my least favorite. Um, kind of sad that that's what ended off the series. This is following a guy that actually is introduced in this series, uh, or in this book, um, that works with our main female protagonist. She has a guy that works with her at the newspaper, and he is the male protagonist in this novella and so it didn't really feel connected to that whole brother sinister like series like we don't see 
really any of the other characters like all the rest of the series we would see the different characters come in and out this one was not like that it just felt kind of almost like a standalone and it was just a little lackluster um the main female character was great she was like a mathematician that works for i think she works for an astronomer so she's doing like the, the like computing calculations she's a computer for an astronomer um and so she's really interested in pursuing that and not really like caring about getting married because um she just really she doesn't want to like end up marrying somebody that won't let her do her work and then she you know meets this guy that's kind of a rake and their romance but it, yeah it was pretty lackluster i really liked her as a character but i didn't love their interactions i wasn't like super invested in their romance so three stars it was fine and then the other one that I don't have a copy I listened to on, on audiobook, I had a um, Libro FM early listening copy of this. And this was I Did a New Thing, 30 Days to Living 3 by Tabitha Brown. And I just picked it up from um, Libro FM because, you know, sometimes you just want like a short um, self-help type book just to, you know, for motivation. This seemed like something like that that you can just read in small clumps. So I kind of took a few weeks to read this, even though it's shorter. Um, and this is just basically, she, this woman, Tabitha Brown, I had never heard of her before. I didn't realize that she is like, you know, ha has like a bunch of like restaurants, but then also has like a YouTube TV show for children. I had never heard of her before, but I guess she's kind of a celebrity. Um, and she did this like experiment where she spent an entire month doing a new thing every day to kind of like get her out of a rut and like change up her life and so then this is basically just every chapter is a new thing she the new day a new thing she did and kind of her extrapolating what she learned from that new thing and giving like advice on how you can do new things but the the thing the reason this got three stars i thought like the concept was good it was you know like kind of motivating to get it out you know outside of your comfort zone but this is where so many of these like self-help nonfiction that i read and i'm like this could have been a blog post and that's what this was. This did not need to be a full book. This definitely could have been a blog post and would have still gotten everything from it. And so it was dragging on after a while because I'm like, yeah, you're basically, it seems like the things you're extrapolating are the same kind of lessons. So I really only needed to have like maybe five days of you doing new things or one week and I could have gotten everything that you were trying to say and also because she's like kind of a celebrity some of the things she tried are like things that us normal people are never gonna do so yes she's trying to pull from those things like stuff that we can get from them but like you talking about going to the emmys isn't really giving me anything or like you getting to take your dad to a target photo shoot yeah, I'm not getting anything from my personal life from that. Um, so I think some of the things she was doing are things that we, we normal everyday people are not going to do as our new thing. Um, yeah, there was times when she was like trying sushi for the first time and like, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's stuff that we could like understand. But yeah, um, some of the things or like going to like this black tie affair at another celebrity's house and not wanting to wear a black tie like <laughs> so I felt like she was a little out of touch with reality sometimes and which made it hard for me made me a little roll my eyes sometimes of like yeah well not getting much out of this like celebrity experience that you're having that's new to you like great for you but I'm never going to experience that and I'm not really getting how you're pulling from that for a normal person. So I think this just could have been a blog post or like something like that, that didn't need to be a full book. So that's why I gave it three stars. Good concept, but not really needed to be, I think it was only like a five hour audiobook, but it didn't even need to be that. And then the last three star book that I read in January is A Time to Dance by Padma Venkatraman. And um, this one is bigger than what I would normally read for the short stack readathon, but it was written in verse. So it read very fast. This is a young adult contemporary following a teenager named Vita who her passion is dance. And that's what she wants to do professionally after school. She's kind of fighting back at her parents about going to like college or whatever that she really just wants to be a professional dancer. And then she gets in an accident where um, one of her legs has to be amputated below the knee. And so then she's trying to figure out like 
what's next for her life because she really wanted to be a professional dancer. Can she do that now that she is an amputee? Um, and kind of her having to, you know, get back up and see what she can do with her dream still. And so this had a lot of really good points to it, especially when we are really focused on her and her passion about dancing. I really enjoyed that part. But the reason I gave it three stars was that so much of this ended up being about this like weird romance stuff. There was like two different like romantic interests. And the first one was like completely inappropriate because he was an adult. And not that he like, and when I say inappropriate, not that he was like instigating this relationship or even thought that there was like any kind of romance. Um, it was her having a crush on him, but it felt really uncomfortable that we were hearing about her like crush on this guy, but her thinking that he likes her back um, because you know, she's a teenager and just like, you know, of course she likes a guy. She's assuming he likes her back because he's nice to her and, and you know, encouraging her and all this stuff, but like, he's just being a, a good person um, and not really a romantic interest, but it felt very uncomfortable for me that that was like so much of her focus for like the first over half of the book. And so I didn't really love that part. And then there was like a more appropriate romance with a guy her age in this in the like second half. And that was fine. But like, neither romance really did anything for me like to move the story along. I really just liked her pursuing her passion of dance. And so that's why I gave it three stars. The dance part and her like, you know, figuring out how to like continue her life in this new situation that part was good but i didn't really love all of the romance stuff but i guess like you know it is probably written for teenagers so maybe they would appreciate that part more than i did as an adult who really does not want to see a teenager crushing on like a 30 year old man all right and then now we're moving on to four star books and i you know, in December, I did really good, like continuing series, like, you know, three of my four books in December were continuing a series that I had already um, started. And then in January, I continued that and read two more books that are continuing series. I read The Tombs of Atuan by Ursula K. Le Guin, which is book two in the Earthsea series. Um, and I had read Wizard of Earthsea, I think almost two years ago. So I'm glad that I, I picked this up because I think if I'd waited too much longer, I would have felt like I had to repeat the first book. Luckily, these aren't like direct, like sequels. It's, it does have like one character. There's a, the main character in the first book kind of like is in each of the books, but he was not the main character in this book. We are following a girl in this book and it was so interesting. So this, um, girl is taken from her family when she I think she was only like five or something like that like when she was born she was like claimed by this like temple and she got to live with her family till she was five and then she was taken to be a priestess at the temple and so she really doesn't know what like a normal life is she ha she was her name was taken away from her she is called um something else um, that is not a name it's just kind of like her title of who she is as this priestess and she is like the head priestess and starting from like age six um so like basically they give her like a year of training or something like that and then she is the head priestess and it's just really of these tombs like she's in charge of these tombs that are like kind of where these gods dwell and it was just really interesting of a perspective of her just like you know we see years of her life being this like high authority figure in this specific religion, but but they are almost kind of like a monastery and where that they're separated from the rest of the world. So she doesn't have any idea how to live in the world and she doesn't remember her family. And it's just very interesting. And then later in the book, once we kind of are absorbed in her, the character from the first book appears in her like, you know, world. I mean, same world, but you know what I mean? Like this is her like, her monastery, her like sacred area, the man from the first one comes into that area and then they interact. Um, and I really enjoy this. I really enjoyed following her as a main character and seeing her kind of like growing up and her struggle dealing with her faith versus what is happening outside in the rest of the world. Um, yeah, so I gave this one four stars and immediately went out and bought the like third book who will follow different characters. So that's one interesting about thing about the series. It's not like following the same protagonist the whole time. There are characters that kind of come in and out, but different protagonists and I enjoyed that one. And then another series I continued was Emperor Mage by Tamora Pierce. And this is book, is this three? 
yeah, book three and the Immortals Quartet. So I have one more book to go on this one. And this is one, like, I don't know what it is about this series. I seem to like need to keep rereading the books. So I had read like the first book a couple years ago and then forgot to continue. So I read it again last year. I started the second book, ended up like quitting it for six months. This might've been like two years ago and then ended up finishing it last year. Started this book last year quit and had to restart it. So I don't know what it is about this because I do like the books. When I finish them, I give them four stars. I think the problem is there is a bit of a pacing problem in this series that by the end I'm invested in. I like the whole book, but it, it always starts off slow and the chapters are very long. So I sometimes have a hard time getting into the books, but then once you're like halfway through, I was like zooming through um, and I do really like the characters. This is following, the whole series is following a girl named Dane who can talk to animals and she kind of has this magic called wild magic where she can also like kind of become animals, like kind of go into their consciousness um, and like stuff like that. So she has this connection with animals and it kind of also like brings her into some political things. Like this one becomes more political because she goes to a different country in the in the whole realm of, what is this, the Tortal is the whole like world that we are in and she's going to a different kingdom so new people to meet new creatures which is fun for her because she you know can talk to these new creatures and yeah this is this was this was a good one i just have a, this problem with pacing with this whole series so hopefully i can finish the the last book this year and not have to like you know read half of it and then reread it in a year or six months and then the next four star book i read was the penelope ed by margaret atwood and this is like a retelling of the Odyssey, but from Penelope's point of view, Penelope is Odysseus's wife who is, you know, back home in Ithaca while, you know, Odysseus went to war for 10 years and then took 10 years in the Odyssey trying to get back home. So she's at home for 20 years um, trying to maintain her husband's, you know, kingdom because he's the king of Ithaca. Um, but with him gone for so long at the Trojan War and then like all the craziness that happens to get back home, other people are trying to take over. So she's trying to keep, you know, his area his. And there's all these suitors that want, are like, you know, Odysseus is dead, you should marry me, we can rule together. So it's like her story of what's happening back at home and her kind of like, you know, she's fighting to keep her place and Odysseus's place. But she's also seen as this very passive character in the original, you know, Odyssey. Um, so we're really seeing from her point of view and her life as a mother as well. Um, yeah, and I just really enjoyed this. I really um, liked the way it was written. I've never read anything by Margaret Atwood, so that actually reading this makes me want to read other things. I know The Handmaid's Tale is a lot more intense than this is. This also had little areas, you know how like Greek chorus a lot of times when, you know, like the tragedies have these like moments in between like interludes where the Greek chorus comes in. Um, we have this too. There's this these characters called um, the Hanged Maids, I think they're called, in the original Odyssey that don't get much attention, but they're basically these maids of Penelope that then when um, Odysseus comes back, he punishes the maids for, you know, giving in to the suitors. But like by giving in, they're basically like, you know, sexually assaulted by the like suitors um, in order to like, protect Penelope um and like to keep kind of order at the court so it's kind of like victim blaming and all that stuff that um the man comes in and just decides he knows what their life has been like and so they are like the Greek course that comes in into these interludes so that part was really interesting yeah I just really appreciate this this is short and easy to read so if you haven't tried Margaret Atwood I would suggest this one especially if you like Greek mythology and kind of want a female perspective on some of the the um stories from that and then next i read a short story that finished off this collection so i've had this collection um you know the birds and other stories by daphne du maurier and i had read the birds a while ago and i had read most of the other stories in here um more than a year ago and for some reason there was just one story that i never got around to finishing so i'd had this like collection sitting there for a couple years and hadn't finished it so during the short stack readathon I read that short story I enjoyed it like I enjoy every Daphne du Maurier story that I read but it was fun it had some creepy moments it had some like commentary you know 
all kinds of stuff that Daphne du Maurier has. Um, and I like it. I liked basically every story in this collection. So I'm going to give the whole collection four stars. I don't know what I would rate the story that I read in January, but I'm finally reviewing the whole book. I would highly recommend Daphne du Maurier's stories if you like kind of gothic literature. They're not going to be like full of action. They're definitely more like that kind of sometimes slow dread. Um, the Birds does have more action than all the other ones. That one is kind of like, you know, there's that dread and then there's a lot of like stuff going on. Um, but for the most part, it is a bit of a, just a slow dread or just like ominous feeling. And I really enjoy them. So four stars for the collection. And the last four stars I read was Island of Whispers by Frances Harding. And this is illustrated by Emily Gravitt. And this is a novella that Frances Harding wrote that um, was then illustrated. I don't know if it had always been meaning to be illustrated or what, but um, yeah, it has these big like full page. Sometimes they take up both sides of the page. They're all in this like blue um, and black and white color palette, really beautiful. And this is very much more of a kind of like folk tale kind of story is what this feels like. Um, it's following, so in this we have a man who's a ferryman who takes the souls of the dead to like move on, you know? So that's his job and we are following his son who has always been kind of like separated. Like he has a lot of compassion for the dead souls and so his dad kind of always keeps him at a distance because he's like, you have to keep the dead separate or you get pulled into the afterlife and stuff like that. So his dad's always kept, as part of his job as a ferryman, kept the dead separate and not interacted with them or or anything and the son just really wants to interact with the souls and like find out you know what was happening in their lives beforehand and has sympathy for them and all that and so he's trying to figure out what his role is um when you know somebody's going to take over the role of the ferryman someday between him and his brother and so we are following this boy and i'm not going to give anything else away because it is very short but i i thought it was a really nice lovely story the pictures were beautiful and so if you like kind of more of a folk tale type story with some pretty pictures, I would suggest that one. And the last thing I read is my only five star of January, and that is Above Ground by Clint Smith. This is a collection of poetry, and this was amazing. I don't even read poetry hardly ever. <laughs> I mean, I read some books in verse, and I might occasionally read some poems, but I haven't read that many like poetry collections in my life. And this one was amazing. I absolutely loved it. And the reason I picked it up was because I had read um, Clint Smith's nonfiction book, How the Word Is Passed. It was one of my favorite books two, of the year two years ago. And I was just like, I really want to read something else by him. And he hasn't written anything other than poetry. So, and that one nonfiction. So I figured I'll try his poetry. And this was so good. I had gotten this originally from the library. But every time I picked it up to read poems, I ended up reading poems out loud to my husband. And like crying or or like just feeling or laughing like some it just all kinds of emotions came from these so many of these are centered around parenthood I feel like this book especially that is the theme running through it and we're starting from when his wife is pregnant and kind of like poems about that to like being you know having a baby and parent of a toddler into like being a parent of a second child and that dynamic of changing the family and so I think as a parent of, you know, two kids that are still young, I could like connect to some of this, you know, as a parent. Um, and that's what like led to some of that, like feeling like connection to the poems and also like feeling humor in the poem because some of them about the kids are, are funny. But then there's also really poignant, poignant poems as well. There's other poems that aren't related to parenthood intermixed, but I would say at least 80% of these are about parenthood and about his kids. Um, so only about 20%, maybe even only 15% aren't about parenthood. A and some of those were really amazing and touching as well. Yeah, so I definitely wanna try his other collection because I, I think that he wrote that prior to being a parent. So that'll be interesting to see um, the difference between one that might be a little lighter because it has the pair of I mean, there's like one that's called like, Ode to the Electric Baby Swing. So there's definitely funny poems, but then there's other ones that I'm just like, whew, you just like, you know, rip my heart out. <laughs> so 
yeah, I would highly suggest this. Even if you don't read poetry, just try some, some of Clint Smith's poems. He just has a way with words and they're beautiful. I love his writing. He's, I definitely will try like everything he has written, poetry, nonfiction. He's also like a, you know, writer for, you know, magazines and, and stuff like that. But um, I haven't read any of his like journalism necessarily, just his poetry and his nonfiction. So that's it. Those are, uh, I feel like, this has been a long time. Sorry, this is a long video, but I was doing both December and January. I read quite a lot in January. Um, when I get around to my February wrap up, it'll be a lot shorter because I think I've only read like four or five things in February. And I will make sure to film that soon so that I don't end up having to combine that with March. So that that is my goal is to be better at this like filming on time. Um, so that's it for me. If you want to talk about any of these books, I would love to hear from you down below and I'll see you next time. Bye.